Andre Breton, a poet and leader of a movement called Surrealism, said that he could imagine a time when high and low, the real and the imagined, life and death, were no longer seen as contradictions. But to see Surrealist painting, we have to come here, to a museum of culture, where all of those distinctions are still fiercely insisted upon. The Surrealist movement wanted to free the mind from the dead hand of calculation and rationality, to liberate desire in a disturbing and beautiful revolution of the mind. This is a really strange painting. It uh, takes the form of a picture puzzle, or a rebus, in which various odd, incommensurate elements are kind of jammed together. Right at the centre, you have this very strange object, which seems like part battle tank, part elephant, part gas mask. On top of it, there's a, this strange avant-garde constructivist sculpture with its creepy eye peering out from one of the elements. And then there are two male and female elements. The female, a strange hollow plaster figure which seems to be beckoning the elephant creature forwards. And the male with its weird erect red uh, stick poking out. Then in the sky, if it is a sky, uh, we have fish flying. The painting has its origins in collage. Ernst was very much known for his collage works, so he would take very often found elements from old encyclopedias and things and cut them up and make these very interesting small-scale collages. So this, in a sense, is a painted collage, and it comes out of some of the collages that Ernst was doing around the same time. I suppose it presents the viewer with a conundrum. What on earth are we to make of this strange assemblage of elements? Ernst was a German artist who fought with the German army uh, as an artillery engineer during the First World War. And he had a pretty hard time of it. He talks about the nausea and the stupidity and the horror of that experience. And there are various ways in which the elements of this painting can be related to the war. Perhaps the most obvious is the flagpole, uh, a symbol of nationalism and militarism but here, very tellingly, it's empty. There's no flag displayed. Then the central element itself seems pretty militaristic. It seems rather like a battle tank, uh, elephant-like. Parts of it relate to the gas mask, which, of course, was such a striking feature, a new feature of um, the First World War. This figure, which represents art and culture and perhaps classical culture, seems to beckon on the war machine. Now that would have had a great salience in both France and Germany following the First World War. Especially in France, there was a feeling that high culture had disgraced itself, that in its implication with the war, in its urging of the war onwards, uh, in its patriotism, uh, in its tub-thumping, that it had become sullied by the war. Out of the stupidity and nausea of the war that Ernst had experienced, he seizes on Dada as a cultural response which makes a certain kind of sense. It becomes one of the most radical and negatory avant-garde movements, one which is prepared to ditch culture entirely, or at least to carry on doing it in certain ways, but to do it in ways which amplify its uselessness. So that is a movement that Ernst becomes involved with, an art which will assault the state and the police and the church. Well, in 1921, when Ernst paints Celebes, surrealism has not really invented itself as a programmatic movement yet. Its manifestos have not yet been written by Breton. 
Andre Breton was a remarkable polymathic figure, uh, a theoretician and poet and organizer and political activist. He was someone who was very much involved in the Dada movement in France, but then tried to develop out of it a more positive movement to, to liberate the mind. And he called it surrealism. Breton was a supporter of Ernst. Um, he arranged an exhibition of Ernst's collages in the year that Celebes is painted. He wrote about Ernst's work and he's very much trying to see in Ernst's works the seeds of this surrealism to come. The reason why this is a sort of crossover painting in some ways between Dada and surrealism is that Breton sees this bringing together of diverse elements as producing a kind of poetic spark. Breton looks to Ernst's collage technique and he looks at the way in which Ernst is bringing very, very diverse and irrationally connected elements together, forcing them into proximity. And he says that between these elements runs a kind of poetic charge, the creation of a new and irrational kind of beauty. What Ernst is developing is a form of dream imagery, which draws on the works of Sigmund Freud. Freudian thinking comes to France all at once uh, around 1922 in what was called the Saison Freud. And it breaks upon the scene with the immediacy of, of Einstein's ideas uh, a year earlier. The Surrealists found it interesting for various reasons. It seemed to say desire is highly important to the, our whole existence and sexual desire in particular too. So many of the things that we see, think of as just being governed by rationality, including many of the aspects of high culture, are actually driven by uh, those unconscious desires. Freud writes a long, very elaborate, uh, very narrative heavy book uh, called The Interpretation of Dreams. Uh, and Ernst reads it avidly. And just as psychoanalysis can, to some extent, interpret the dream, we can begin to interpret this picture puzzle that Ernst has given us. The figure to the side, this sort of strange stovepipe affair with his uh, erect red penis, seems to be getting a hard-on because of the war machine. And that's not immediately readable from the painting. It's not as if Ernst is coming out straight away and saying that, but it's something that we may get through carefully reading the elements of the painting. The odd avant-garde quasi-constructivist sculpture that sits on top of the elephant figure, what is it? Some kind of governing spirit or rider of this elephant of war? And the eye that looks out at it directly at the viewer from behind a form of armour uh, would have seemed pretty creepy. And it perhaps taps into another Freudian element, the uncanny, the idea that we look at these things, the elements, they seem familiar, but at the same time strange. So there's this double aspect running. Uh, they, they're disturbing because they're, in Freud's words, unheimlich. They're, they're close to us, but at the same time, strange and repellent. Psychoanalysis as a whole in France at this time is a scandalous movement. It's too German, uh, it's too sexual, uh, it's sometimes described as being a kind of poisonous gas operating on the mind, or it's compared to surveillance and spying and misdirection, all of these things. You know, again, German faults naturally, uh, as seen through the eyes of mainstream French culture. Ernst Celebes is not exactly like that. Uh, its subversive character is a little bit hidden, but it would have been deeply puzzling. So often incomprehension would have gone along with hostility. The Surrealists are on the margins of culture. Uh, they're a small, embattled, scandalous group. 
we can go some way to reading these elements and deciphering them and seeing how the elements fit together. But in the end, we're not supposed, I think, to arrive at a final solution to this picture puzzle. Its power is to do with a way in which it encourages us to read it in detail, to try and make sense of all these different elements. But in the end, it remains an intractable mystery. <laughs>